Deb Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. Welcome back to the program, Mom. Zev Brenner, we're looking at the challenges of getting a Jewish divorce, getting a get. Rabbi Tzvi Gatner, Gatner joined, Gartner joined us with the Av, the Bezin of the Vat Hadin, the Hora, author of Sefer Kafia Beget. He's a publisher of a periodical called Sefer Tavunos. And Rabbi Avi Kahan is a Dayan of the Vat Hadin, the Hora. He's a founder and vice president of Derek Shalom Center, member of Access for Justice, the ultra Orthodox community. Uh, Rabbanim, to, uh, thank you for joining us. And I might add that Rabbi Gartner was in Borough Park last week for a shear on coerced Gittin. And Elliot Hirsch, we see, was present and showed himself to be very knowledgeable. And Tom Chachm on the laws of Gittin. And I thank you for helping put together the segment. So uh, thank you for joining us. Let me begin with you, Rabbi Tzvi Gartner. So what is the status of divorce? It seems that there's been an increased amount of divorces getting the Jewish community. We hear about more problems. And I would assume that after COVID, in the general society, there have been more divorces. I would assume that's affected the Jewish community as well. So welcome and look forward to our conversation. Let me begin with you, Rabbi Gartner. Um, yes, definitely there's a problem with divorces. Um, it's not something new. Um, as, lo as, as long ago as perhaps 40, 45 years ago, Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, the Sal told... Um, I think we're getting a little reverb, if maybe if we can just change your setting or on the um, on your microphone. Go ahead, Rabbi Gardner. Okay. Rabbi Gardner, you muted your, gar you muted your microphone. Okay, so how about, how about now? Uh, we're still getting you in stir, but but go ahead. Yes. Okay. So uh, it's not it's it's not a new problem. It's been uh, mounting and growing for the past uh, at least 40, 45 years ago already. Yaakov Kamenetsky of the Sal told uh, Rabban here in Monsi that uh, in his opinion this is going to be this is going to be the the, the, the next uh, crisis in Kali Israel. And he suggested that the uh, Rabbanim uh, prepare them for it and learn the halachas to make sure they can deal with so all the get cases uh, um, constructively. Um, so what we're seeing now is uh, now we're 40 years uh, down, the, down, down the road. We're definitely, we've made, we, we made progress, but there's still a long way to go. We still need to uh, create what they did in I said, what progress were we made? If it seems like the divorce numbers are greater than they were 40 years ago, so what progress? Because uh, because the uh, problem is growing exponentially, and uh, the but they didn't are not really equipped to deal with it. Uh, slowly but surely, we're trying to put together the but they didn't that can deal with it, but it's taking time, much too much time. When you say that the courts of Jewish law, the but they didn't should be more able to deal with the situation. Can you define what you mean? What should they be doing that they're not doing? Well, listen. When it's litigated, getting everyone, everyone wants to wants to get divorced, so things are not so bad. Sooner or later, they work things out. But when you have a case where one of the parties is recalcitrant, I mean, the, the husband is, is, is especially when the husband is refusing to give a get, but also to certain to a lesser extent when the wife is refusing to accept the get. So then, uh, Basin has to be more proactive. They have to know the halachas and they have to be prepared to invoke the halachas. Um, with and again, also, but they have to be aware of the fact of, of, of what the borderlines of a lot is not to overstep the borderlines, and um, that's a little bit that, that, has, that has been very lacking. I, I think, uh, but who's first of all in America, unlike Israel, where you have the courts of Jewish law, the Bate Din are under the the chief rabbinate to the, in Israel. Here you can have anybody can open up a bezin. You can have, you have so many different bezins. So how do you coordinate a standard that different Batedin will adhere to considering that there's so many of them that there's no cohesive body that oversees them? Exactly. That's a major problem. If we were, if we were living in a utopian society, then of course Kaiser would get together and they would uh, create a standard. But we know, unfortunately, we're far from living in a utopian society. So, so we're not going to solve the problem if everybody can open their own bezin. Let me welcome Rabbi Avi Kahan. First of all, tell us about the Vat Hadin Vahura. So first, I want to I want to mention, Mr. Renner, we don't have a divorce problem. We have a shown bias problem. 
Divorce is what happens after there's a shown bias problem in polystyrol. And I, I think we need to stress that. There's a big problem with people keeping shown bias. Divorce is just what manifests when there's a real, real lack of shalom bias. Maybe years ago, people didn't turn to divorce, and now people are turning to divorce. And we could discuss if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we have a tremendous shalom bias problem in our hands. No, Not I agree really with you. Crisis. People who can't get along want to get divorced. So, so we, have a bias we have a tremendous amount of, 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 I mean, mental illness is becoming is a forefront problem in Kali, so... We have people who are not tolerable of differences anymore, people who want to be very, very comfortable in their lifestyles. And it's a complicated question. How much does someone have to stay in a marriage when it's destroying them? And how much does somebody have to push forward and hope that miracles are going to happen? And when does somebody just push forward no matter what? And it's a, it's a real complicated question. Divorce is what happens when we finally see that Shalom Bias is totally not the gay anymore. But the problem is that we have a huge Shalom Bias crisis on our hands. Well, listen, it is a shalom bias problem. So, but really, so there are two separate issues. There's an issue of shalom bias. And by the way, maybe the, the situation would call for that there has to be institutions, which wouldn't necessarily be the courts of Jewish law. The Batei Dinim would there have to be some ways of having community centers or more community participation in shalom bias. And by the way, you mentioned about depression and all kinds of mental illnesses. Maybe there's some ways that we should also be encouraging people to get professional help when they're dealing with these situations. Beforehand, it was a stigma to go to a therapist or go to a psychologist or, or a psychiatrist. And I think it's changing, but that maybe that's part of the equation here. So you have dealing with that. And then when they come to a Bate Din for divorce, their problems in the Bate Din system, how to do divorce and how to make sure it's done properly. So I think- so I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. That's why myself and- I, I was involved in this Vada Din Vairo with Rabbi Gertner, which is a Besden, but we opened up a mental health clinic called the Darif Shalom Center, which is a mental health clinic, which have licensed professionals to deal with the mental health crisis and, and try to the best of our capabilities to restore Shalom bias. And if, if God forbid, if Chas Shalom it heads towards a divorce, people have to remember, people don't like hearing this, but it's not clear that after TSMA, some people aren't going to stand up with their civic reason. Or in Olam Haba, that people are not going to hang out with their civic reason. You know, it's not people. People really don't want to hear this, but it's not so simple that people aren't going to really, after Tchias Mason, even if they were divorced, go back to the first person that they were married to. Even if people get divorced, divorce is not like the Christians believe that you're totally disassociating from your 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 other civic, your other half. Divorce is that the other spouse gets to move on forward. But we still believe in Bas Plani Laplani. We still believe in Zivugim. We still believe in the Zaya that says that every single Nisham was born half and they're compatible to another half. The question is, how do you deal with it when it's working? How do you deal with it when it's not working? Well, right, right, let me ask you this question. And I'm fascinated by what you're saying about the who says that the person you married was your Zivik, the one that was you were destined to. Maybe the second wife or the third wife or the fourth wife is your Zivik, the one that you're destined to be. So on what do you base the fact that you're that somebody can get divorced and still be with that divorced person um, in Olam Haba in the world to come? It's it's a really, really, really solid question. You know, if 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 you were to write, you know, at, at most Shavu Brachas, you find that people enjoy speaking about the topic of Bas Plani Laplani, right? That Hazal tell us, Abom Yim Kaidim Yitzir Slavad, 40 days before a Vlad was created, whatever that means, um, a Bas Kol goes out and says, Bas Plani Laplani. Which Masechta would you put that in? They'd probably put in Masechtas Kedushin, maybe maybe Masechtas Gitin, probably Masechtas Ksubis, because I'll put it in Masechtas Saita. You know, they put it in, the, it's Daf Beis in Masechtas Saita. You know, the, the Masechta where the husband is usher to stay with that wife. And the Gemara goes into, from that conversation, from Rish Lakish's memra of the conversation of a husband being usher on his wife, and if the husband deserved it, if the wife deserved it, if they were their proper zivik, the Gemara goes into the Bas Plani Laplani. Look, it's a question that nobody's going to be able to know the answer. It's a question that the Rambam says has to do with Yedi and Bechira. Like if Hashem knew something was going to happen, could you have Bechira to change it? It's a real complicated question. Nobody's going to know the answer. But since nobody's going to know the answer, that's a question I'd rather not discuss if you know. We nem on that the person you marry, like the stipler writes, the person you marry is your zivik. You want to know, could you last with your zivig? Could everyone last with their zivig? I mean, we have a parasha called Gittin in the Torah. Doesn't mean that it's not your zivig. You're right. It's an easier answer to say it's not my zivig. That's a very easy answer to say. But that that that's that's like what, I think that's the world of Afghaz Kedushin. You know, that's the world that says, hey, I was never married to you. We were never, we were never meant to each other, which that's not a world we accept. We accept the world of Gittin. This was my zivig. It was a zivig and now I'm getting divorced from that zivig. 
But I don't think it's a I don't think it's an appropriate hashkafa to say, hey, this didn't work out, therefore we weren't meant for each other. Like blame it on Hashem. I don't think we should blame blaming our shidduch crisis or our shalom bias crisis on Hashem. We should blame it on humanity. Humanity has a lot to learn. It was your zivik. It's probably most probably your zivik, and it didn't work out. And now the question is, what do you do when your zivik doesn't work out? But to blame it to say that this shidduch wasn't meant to begin with, I mean, there's a community no, that's... But, but I'm saying, I didn't mean, what I meant to say was, is that who says when the couple gets divorced, you said that that when somebody gets divorced, his zivik, the one that he was married... Uh, is somebody that he could end up with sitting next to in the world to come. So my question was, maybe the first Zivik was, maybe the first marriage wasn't his Zivik, maybe it wasn't his death. There's a boss called, there's a heavenly voice 40 days before one's born saying, this person is going to marry this person, they're destined for one another. But who says that person is their Zivik? Maybe they didn't marry their, their, their Zivik. That's maybe the maybe you want to take the chance? <laughs> no, you don't I'm, want to take the chance. I'm, I'm, I'm not for divorce. I'm, I'm, or, no, I'm no, no. Even, even, even those who get divorced, do they want to take the chance that it wasn't their zivik? I mean, you imagine how embarrassing it's going to be. You spend six years fighting in court, a million dollars, and then Mashiach comes tomorrow, and you have to go continue <laughs> marry. You're going back to that person. It's not worthwhile to take a chance. You know, it's a something that I saw. Is it Base Hill? Who said that if they, if a wife burns your toast, that you can divorce her? Right. Base Hill. Yeah. Base Hill. If it said that's what I thought. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that it wasn't your zivik. You okay, see, but, it's a Christian. It's a Christian mentality to believe that divorce means that it wasn't your zivig. It, it's your zivig. You just couldn't last with that zivig, and now you're getting divorced. And that's what there's a part of the Torah. It doesn't sound petty that if she burns your toes, you can divorce her. But I forgot who said that if if your if somebody can be that kind of attitude where he's willing to divorce you or to give you a heart because you burnt the toast, then you shouldn't be married to that person. Yeah, it could that. be. It's like that. That's like a Hasidic answer. Probably what it means, the way the Chalkas Mechaykik explains it in Shulchan Aruch, it means somebody who is vindictive. It's like you made yourself a delicious toast, and then they went and they take it and they go burn it for you. You know, it's it's like a vindictive type of behavior, and it's very hard for certain people, especially Tamid of Hillel, the base Hillel. It was very very difficult for them to to continue in their year Shemaim and their growth with being married to a vindictive person. You know, the Talmudim of Beishamai, they didn't, no matter what they stay married, no matter how difficult their wife was, until the Torah told them to get divorced, which was if their wife, you know, committed adultery, and then there's a sock from Hashem to get divorced, they stayed married. But Beishamai's Talmudim, they, they lived, they were, they, they a little bit lived differently. And if their wives were vindictive, and Rebbe Kiva has a, I mean, a more radical opinion. Rebbe Kiva says, I feel much in Nahi Manu. You know, if you fall in love with somebody else, you know, that's that's a real radical opinion. But they lived on this level of a haftalur echa kamoicha, much higher level. So maybe that's, you know, if they fell out of love with their spouses, they used to get divorced. But we pass in like, like we're supposed to be noig like Beis Hillel and machma like Beis Shammai. Rabbi Garden, let me turn to you. It's, it's fascinating. And, and I'm, we're, so I get a lot of calls coming in. Uh, Rabbi Garden, let me ask you this question. So Rabbi Kahan definitely positioned two points of view. One, that we have to deal with the mental health and that leads to divorce. Uh, and, and I think also financial pressures lead to divorce too. But let's get down to a practical matter. What could we do to improve the situation so when somebody has to go through a divorce that is done in a proper manner and without all the problems with extortions and money and all kinds of legal issues that come up with, and some women end up being a guno where they get chained, where they can't remarry because of the problems dealing with divorce. So what can, let's look and see what some possible solutions might be, um, Rabbi Gartner. <laughs> well, first of all, I agree with Icon that definitely uh, we should be working on Shalom by first, but okay. And we should be, we should be using professionals and, uh, and uh, mental health professionals and all the professionals you need. But okay, if, 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 if all else fails and you end up in basin, so uh, yeah. All I can say is that if, 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 if the basin system works, so then it shouldn't be a problem in most in most most situations. If the basin system doesn't work, then uh, if the basin system is broken, then uh, you are going to have problems. Yes. But the basin system is broken in America, and as I mentioned earlier, you have like anybody can form a basin. You get a few individuals involved. So how do we solve the problem where a lot of women, a lot of men? I mean, I'm getting calls from men right now that have yeah. problems. With the divorce situation, so it's not just limited to women. So there is a problem here uh, where we have more divorces. Why we have the divorces, I think Rabbi Kahan was addressing some of it. But once they get to that point, the process is there's a, the process to a certain degree is flawed in some cases. Or Rabbi Gardner. Yes, Rabbi Kahan. 
Sorry, what's the question? No, the question was there's the system, the business system is flawed in lots of places uh, with all kinds of problems getting to get. What can we, we do to make some changes? First of all, you have to understand, and this is very, very, very important. The Ramam says one of the first signs before Mashiach is going to come is that the Bezdin system is going to be restored to its glory. The Ramam bases it on a Pasuk that says, So that that the Bezdin system is not at its glory. It's part of the Golos. I mean, we could blame the system or we could blame the Gullus. I mean, whichever one we want to blame. But Kulzman, that we're in Gullus, a, a faction of being Gullus is not having an appropriate Besden system and having corruption. I mean, the Gemara says at the end of Marcus that there were many Tanoim who were watching foxes or weasels escaping from the Kodesh HaKadoshim. And Rabbi Kiva, while the, many of the Tanoim were crying, Rabbi Kiva was laughing. And the Tanoim were, were shocked there. Rabbi Kiva was laughing. And he said, look, for him, this is a sign of, of an iskaim of the nevua that the nevua says that by Gullah, certain things are going to look this way. I mean, we know the Gemara at the end of Masech, the site that says that the Bezin system is not going to be well at the end of, at the end of the Kvist of Mashiach. And we can be proud. We're heading towards the coming of Mashiach, and therefore the Bezin system is not going to look appropriate. What we have to do, I mean, we have to fix it. We have to try our best to fix it. And it's very, very difficult to fix the Bezin system because in order to fix the Bezin system, we have to fix humanity. And in order to fix humanity, I mean... <laughs> We have, we have a lot of work to do to fix humanity. A lot of work to do. You got your work cut out. So <laughs> Rabbi Tzvi Gartner is the Av Bezin, the head of the Bezin of the Vad Hadin Vahara, who's the author of Sefer Kafia Beget. He's also the publisher of a periodical called Sefer Tavunos. And Rabbi Avi Kahan joined us as well. Dayan of the Vad Hadin Vahara, founder and vice president of Daryl Shalom Center, member of the Access for Justice for the Ultra Orthodox Community. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. You're listening and you're watching the Talk Line Network. You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. And we're back. Rabbi Avi Kahan joins us. Rabbi Tzvi Gartner with us. We're looking at Bezin. We're looking at how to deal with uh, problems leading up to divorce, which is a major, major problem. Okay, we have a lot of calls coming in, and uh, before we get to, let's see, I believe we have Robert in Boca Raton, Florida. Listen to us at TalkLineNetwork.com. That's TalkLineNetwork.com. You can catch us uh, 24 hours a day at TalkLineNetwork.com. Okay, let me just see if we have Robert over here. Okay, Uh, Robert in Boca Raton. He's been patiently waiting. And we have a lot of people waiting with questions, and we're going to get to some of your, your questions, some of your calls, your comments, your emails. Okay, Robert, go ahead. Robert and Boca Raton, go ahead. Your question for our guests. Hi. Good work. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. My name is Jason, calling from uh, Boca Raton. Thank you for having me. So your question or comment for our guests? Okay, so I have a few questions. I actually, I myself am a divorced man. I get to get right away. Um, had a pretty quick divorce. Um, we've been in and out of court, but that's that's not the point. But I actually work with a number of men who were in the divorce process and the getting process. And I just wanted to, I had a few different questions directly wrapped by Gahan. One is, you know, why did close his Gittin? And, you know, how is he qualified to ask on Gittin? You know, just that in his smicha. And last, uh, what's what's the background and story with the Derek Shalom there and his involvement there? And what are the questions for you? I couldn't hear the question. No, I wasn't clear. Wasn't clear. What were the questions? Yes. Yes, you just repeat it succinctly again. What did you want Rabbi Kahan to address? I think you want to know your background as far as getting, how did you get prepared for it? That was one question. On Gittin versus, you know, our Gidoli. Um, Why did he close down his base bin? And what's his involvement uh, with the Derek Shalom Center that just closed down as well? I can't hear Mr. Brenner. You're going to have to repeat the question. I think it, 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 are you saying that he closed down his Bezdin and he closed down his center? Is that what uh, you're saying? So the word on the street is that his Bezdin was down a while ago. And then from my understanding, he was working as a therapist 
for the Derek Alum Center, but they recently lost their government funding um, and they closed down as well. You said your center closed um, down, lost government funding, and then he, uh, that was- Derek Shalom Center. Derek Shalom so Center. And he said so there was some issue with the Besden too. And, and he asked it, I was told he voluntarily closed down his Besden. I want to know, you know, as someone who's in the Jewish divorce world, you know- Okay, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, let, him, let him respond to you. Um, go ahead, okay, Rabbi. Thank you. No, I, I don't. I I don't know where where you're getting information. Baruch from the Bezin's running and the Derek Shalom Center is running fully. Both of them. But anyway, thank you for your phone call. Let's move on to Al. Uh, let's go on to Bergenfield, New Jersey. Go ahead. You're on the air. I believe it's Alan. Go ahead in Bergenfield, New Jersey. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Hello. Yes, Alan. Go ahead. Your question for our guests. Yeah, Avi, this is Ari. I remember you put a Sirav on me, uh, and you signed all three places on the Sirav. Signed your name and the other two pla other two people's names. Uh, you also did it all by yourself, without even a Besden. And uh, I just wanted to know how you get up lying like this. Hold on, hold on. You're, you're hold on. If you want, if you want to ask questions and you want to be respectful, you'll be on. Once you start getting into at hominem attacks, we're not going to allow it. So you you want to ask a question? So I'm going to let him respond to you. Okay, my question is, how do you consider your seer of kosher? It's a very good question. So I'll answer you because you try to threaten all the Dayanim who signed it and nobody backed off from your threats. They Baruch okay. Hashem signed it all themselves. And yeah, it's a problem. I, I think it's a problem that when you sign to go to a Bezden and you don't want to show up to the Bezden, I think it's a very, very big problem. I know you threatened all the Dayanim and you called them up one by one to threaten. So maybe, maybe, maybe define, let's define what a serif is for those that don't know what it is. So let's define it's, that. Uh, so a serif, a serif happens in, in one, generally on, one or two or three on, cases. Let, let, let him respond. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rabbi Khan. A serif happens generally one or two, one of one of two, three cases. And this specific case we'll refer to is somebody who voluntarily, don't ask me why, but voluntarily decides to sign by a specific Bezdik and then decides not to listen to the Bezdin at all and not to show up to the Bezdin or to show up and play a lot of shtick. And sometimes it's not the person's fault. He's guided in a very, very wrong way, which we could feel bad. And sometimes the person decides to threaten all the Dayanim and get into his head that there were four signatures. But at the end of the day, you have to listen to Bezdin. And if Bezdin passed in something, you have to follow through with it. And it's very sad when people don't. And when people threaten Dayanim and they threaten their lives, which your caller has done. He's specifically called, not me, but he's called on one of the therapists who sat in on the entire of because the, we felt we were dealing with mental health issues. And he continues to threaten them and concoct stories about forged signatures, which have no basis. It's very, very, very sad. I would How recommend do you resolve you... a situation like this. I think uh, uh, Avi or Ari, what, you, what your name is, is that uh, he's saying that you have to, that you didn't respond to the best and that you, and you threatened the judges. Is that true? That's a complete lie. Um, I agree. She actually, from the beginning, refused to go to Besden. He wrote about me that I refused to go to multi Botheginim, which is a lie. I never refused. He said I refused many Hasmanas from many Botheginim. That's also a lie. But did you refuse? Did you refuse the the subpoena from his Besden? I went the one time to his Besden. But he made this whole lie up about me that I didn't participate, which is not true. But did you and participate in his bezin or you didn't participate in his bezin? I brought somebody with me who spoke for me. That's called participating. So you brought a toe and you brought somebody to defend yourself in the bezin. Exactly. And okay. If that's not called participating. Then how do I give a get? Because the get is written by having somebody else do it for you. So he's saying that he was that he did appear in the basin with a towing. Yeah, so whatever. We, we're not going to get into details. Not to embarrass, case, not to embarrass, not to embarrass the caller. We're not going to get into details. Okay. But the caller knows himself what he's dealing with. Baruch Hashem Rabbi Gertner, who looked into the case, saw the information on the case, and he could validate what happened. I think the caller is dealing with a lot of demons and a lot of complicated situations in his life right now. I think he's, 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 he's it's, it's very sad. It's very sad when mental illness takes over, takes over. And I wish, I wish, I wish that he has a refuge to him of Bukharif Mamish. 
Ari, we're going to have to move on, but I, I don't want to get involved into details of a case back and forth. I don't think we should adjudicate the whole case on the air. I know you said you went to the best, and there's some obviously there's some issues over here. So hopefully you can get these things resolved. He considers signing a zero in all three places by himself without a Bezdin, a kosher zero. So let me ask, did you sign a zero against him without? So with the, the, caller, the caller knows that he reached out to the other two Dayanin to try to threaten them to withdraw their signatures. One of the one of the people he actually even called their Rav, he threatened them. The person kept on showing me the emails of the threats that he kept on receiving. And they're not nice threats. They're very, very violent threats. And it's really nasty when you when you keep on threatening people. But uh, Baruch Hashem, our hands are clean. I those two people signed. There's no. We have Dayanim. They work with us constantly on a daily basis. Everyone signed. He got this what we call a juke in his head that there were forged signatures. They're all accurate signatures. You know good and well, Mr. Pliny, that you th try to threaten everyone to withdraw the signatures. Nobody withdrew it. They were valid signatures. And I wish you a lot of excellent things. You should, do, you should do tshuva. Okay, so Ari, I appreciate your phone. I hope you get this thing adjudicated. And uh, but I appreciate your phone call. Here's another email question coming in. I think this is, and again, a lot of men that are calling in tonight or responding. He said, "Ask the rabbi: Is there a real problem with Kuris Gittin? And are we supposed to keep quiet once a get was given?" I'll give that question to Rabbi Gertner. Is there a, I can't. I, I can't answer you. Answer you as to what the uh, what the percentages are. But the rule is that if, if a competent and based in rules that you are uh, that you are allowed to or you're supposed to coerce, so then no, there's no problem if, if the gate was coerced. Of course, uh, we're not. We're the base is not going to advocate that that the anything illegal should be done. But there are plenty of things that are considered halachic coercion that fall within the prism of uh, the uh, the boundaries of, of legally accepted behavior. Um, if the basin did not give a second, and the basin erred, and there was coercion, but it's halakh and coercion, then it definitely could be a problem, yes. And so when, 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 can you define coercion? In other words, there are situations where uh, a person, a man doesn't want to give a get. And so sometimes I think one, one person went to jail for arranging for beatings for it. And I know there's a concept of kofin or so, at Shomorot, and that you force him to, he says, I want to do it, but what can you define what is acceptable what is not acceptable when it comes to coercion to giving a get okay again if if the halacha is a coerced of the garage then halachically speaking anything goes you can uh, you can physically beat him uh, halachically speaking legally speaking you can't do that so you have to resort to other other recourses for instance putting the man in putting the husband in the room um having him jailed um uh, ha having him uh, uh, financial uh, financial uh, um, uh, sanctions against him. Um, that's that all these things are considered real free. And there are there are less the, le lesser the, the things that are they're not considered a lovely fear, but they're also effective. Short social banning, shaming, etc. All these things can be done where there is a sack of fear. Where there is no sack of fear, so then. You would uh, demonstrations would be all right, for, uh, 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 assuming that they don't uh, go, they don't uh, become violent or get a threat of violence. That's, that's, an, that's so in a nutshell. If you're, if you're allowed to do so, if you're allowed to do protests, you're allowed to do all these factors, social media, etc., to get to embarrass somebody to give a get. So, mm -hmm. uh, how do you have a situation where a guest is forced? If that's the, or you can jail so in Israel, they even jail people. So what's yeah. considered a situation where it's forced if you're allowed to do it? Well, again, I answer. Where there is no psaka of fear, where there's a psaka of, let's say, well, how, do you, how, do you get a, how do you get a, how do you get a psaka of fear? How, how does that come about? Uh, you go to basin, the, the, the parties, the parties go to basin, and the basin here is the case, and the basin rules that this is a, the, uh, the issues were so, so extreme that no, no normative woman could live with such a man, and therefore we have to force him to give the divorce. Um, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the halacha of even also the garish. Sometimes the the issues are severe, but not so severe as to say that it's impossible to live with him. But nonetheless, the rabban, the, the basin says that well, we're not going to give up sack of koyfin, but what in the, the language of the mission, yosim meeting suba, 
Nowadays, the Bote Dinner more use different uh, terminology. They say, Chayi L'Garish, Mitzvah L'Garish. In such a case, you cannot do real coercion, mean physical beating, put her in, have her in jail, put her in the chayim, but you can definitely do social banning, provided, or make that decision, provided that it, that it, 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 it doesn't become violent. If it becomes violent, then it's already a question of fear. So that's where the issue can come. You know, if it's a, if it's, if it's a peaceful demonstration, so then it's not a problem. If it's a demonstration that's, that, 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 that becomes violent or it becomes a, a threat of violence and, and, and it's a culpable threat, then it might be a problem. Uh, again, I'm not, I'm not giving a blanket saying that, that, that every, every threat of violence will invalidate the get. I'm not giving a blanket ruling that, that uh, what, is not, what is a peaceful demonstration is it will, will, will be kosher. Each case has to be dealt with on its own, on, on, on a case-to-case -case basis with the basin, and the basin has to, uh, has to analyze all the issues, all the facts, and then come out with a ruling. But as a general rule, I just uh, put, it, put, it down, put it down for you. Are there are the bezins equipped to deal with these situations? Uh, Excuse me. Wait, wait, I said, are the bezins equipped to deal with situations to determine whether coercion was used? Are they equipped to deal with cases where there is mental problems with the relationship? Are they are they able to do that? Some, but you didn't can, and some, and some not. And uh, you know, obviously, I'm not going to start to giving out names. Which basins yes, which basins uh, no. Uh, all the quite obviously, I I believe that I'm a member of the basin of uh, of uh, Vlad Vlad and I wrote the book, so I believe that our basin is 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 equipped to deal with it. Yes. Okay, so can you mention other Bate Dinam that are reliable other parts of the country? I don't want you to say ones that are not, I, you don't feel comfortable doing that, but can you mention I, I, some? I would, I would rather not do that because then you get into, the, into what's called in Allah, in, in, uh, in the terminology, uh, let's just say there definitely are other Bate Dinam that are competent. Uh, the, okay. Do we have any idea how many Bate Dins, how many Jewish courts will there exist in the United States? Is there any way of knowing? I don't know. I live in Israel, so I can't really tell you. But uh, Rabbi Khan, do we have any way of knowing how many Bate Dinim there exist in the country? No, in this no country? I, I don't. I, I, I have the blah, you can make your own, but professional ones. You know, whenever I one time I one time went with Rabbi Gertner to a few big place who who are authorized in in Gitin in Eretz Israel. And I was complaining about one of the, one or two of the Bate Dinim that in America that I felt were very corrupt. And one of the Dayanim turned to me from B'nai Brak, Rabbi Gertner was there. He says, look, if they're going to shut down, what's going to open up in their place might be 10 times worse. There are Bate Dinim opening up right and left in America. And, you know, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's not. But there are many, many Bate Dinim. And that's part of the American system that every single person could go and open up a Besden. Yeah, but I don't know if that's a good answer saying, well, if this is a bad bezin, but if you close it down, there'll be a worse one coming up. <laughs> I'm not well, sure it's that's not, a... It's, not, it's not a question of an answer. It's a question of what the facts are. The facts are that in America, any person could open up a bezin. Right, right. And, and that's a problem. There's no regulatory body. And there's also, I believe in Israel, Rabbi Gartner, you can appeal. If the bezin has a ruling, you can appeal to a higher bezin. You can't do that in America. It's it's not. I would I would disagree. By us by us in the Bezin, we we right. have in our arbitration agreement. It says that anybody could appeal it to the Bezin of Remendel, Shafran, and Bnei Brak, and that they could look over the appeals. Like the caller who complained before, I mean, he has access to appeal the case whenever he wants. You know, uh, he appealed it. He didn't like the answer that he got, and he actually sent pretty pretty deep curse words and clawless to the Bezin on his appeal. Um, but you could you could appeal, and I think every best, and it's very very wise that they should get non biased individuals who live in Eretz Yisrael who aren't related to anybody in America, don't have a a relationship or any any improprieties with any, anybody in America. That they should look over all their cases and all their explanations to make sure, for transparency reasons, to make sure things are authentic. But a lot of but they, and a few but they didn't, I know in America have in their arbitration a clause an appeal clause. Well, that's that's an important thing because not everyone does. I've heard stories where people complain that they felt the ruling was wrong and based whatever the reasons might be, and there was no way for them to challenge it. 
but uh, but I'm glad to see that you have an arbitration. I, so I would tell you, even the Bate Dina that don't have an, uh, an appeal process, you could challenge it. You could always write back that you want an explanation, that you want transparency. A lot of the Bate Dina give explanations. People are always going to complain because people go to Bezdin not willing to hear. People go to Bezdin to win, which is a big problem. You're not supposed to go to Bezdin to win. You're supposed to go to Bezdin to hear their opinion. Um, people go to Bezdin initially to win. I mean, that's why they hired Toyanim to win the case. But a lot of Bate Dina share the reasons. Okay, but 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 as you said, there are corrupt bezin. So the people who've gone to a corrupt bezin and felt that justice wasn't served, and they felt that they have no no recourse. Um, but you're saying there is some recourse, which is important. So the recourse would be they can still appeal if that if that bezin allows, if that bezin puts it in arbit in their arbitration agreement, lechatzchila, that you could appeal it. Then of course you could appeal it. We're speaking, we're looking at the challenges of Jewish divorce, uh, Bate Dinan, which is the court of Jewish law. We're looking at getting a get. Rabbi C. Gartner is here. He lives in Israel. He's the Av of the Bezin, the Vat Hadin Vahora, author of a Sefer, Kafia Beget, publisher periodical, Sefer Tavunos. Rabbi Avi Kahanis Dayan is a Dayan, a judge at the Vat Hadin Vahora, founder and vice president of the Derek Shalom Center, member of the Access for Justice for the Ultra Orthodox Community. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Talk Line. You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. Now we're back. Our guest, Rabbi Tzvi Gartner, he is the Av of the Bezin of the Vad Hadin Vahara, the author of Sefer Kafia Beget. He's a publisher of the periodical Sefer Tavunos. And Rabbi Avi Kahan is a Dayan of the Vat Hadin Vahora, founder and vice president of Darul Shalom Center, member of the Access for Justice for the Ultra Orthodox Community. Rabbi Kahan, what is the Access for Justice for the Ultra Orthodox Community? What is that? Okay, so that's a good question. Access for Justice was created by the governor um, to allow people to understand the court system. They shouldn't get abused by the court system and to be able to have a better relationship with the court system. Um, I was appointed by New Square and by Kirasiel to be involved with the Hasidic community, with a board of about 11, 11 members, of eight of them, eight of them judges, to be able to make sure that people understand the court system, that it doesn't get abused and misused. And uh, it's it's a very interesting committee, and it's called Access for Justice. Okay, and how active is the organization? Um, not, I'll tell you the truth, not so active yet. I hope it's going to get off the ground. Right now, it's more uh, bureaucratic. It's more going through its systems, getting off the ground. It's been open like for six, seven months already, but it didn't really take any any tremendous lead right now. Let's go to Chaim in Brooklyn. Your question for our guest. Go ahead, Chaim in Brooklyn. Well, I, um, this question, um, the rabbi didn't uh, answer about if a get one that's potentially possible. If people bring it up, raise the concerns about it, um, especially since uh, there was some public uh, humiliation campaigns uh, last year when uh, a lot of gittin were given uh, without authorization from Bezin. Well, who gave the gittin? Who gave the get if not Bezin? How did they get? No, they, people people engaged in publication protests against the man in the Tiffany community. And the base didn't uh, didn't authorize it, and the getting were given. And then, so, if I understand the question, if if they're protesting against an individual, does that influence the bezin to give uh, a get, or does the bezin have to sanction a demonstration? Can people demonstrate even without a sanction from a bezin, as far as to force somebody to give a get? I'm asking a double part. I'm, I'm amplifying on your question, Chaim. I'll let the, one of the rabbis respond to you. But the you missed the, the second part, which is. Just if the get was given, do, do we now have a mitzvah obligation to speak about it if it's puzzle? But who determines that it's puzzle, that it's not valid? The Torah. But who determines that? The Torah. The, the Torah, someone has to determine that. But I'm going to let the rabbis as, respond. As, as, I said, as I said previously, if a Bezdin does not authorize protests and humiliation and people just do it anyways, and the men give it. 
problematic and not. Oh, I'm going to let the, one of the rabbis respond to you, either Rabbi Kahan or Rabbi Gertner. Go ahead. I'm going to give it to Rabbi Gertner. Okay, so the answer is that, uh, um, as I mentioned earlier, depending upon the circumstances, the get might be invalid, yes. But uh, who is the one who should deal with it? He should be responsible or rebuttal. Certainly not disgruntled uh, uh, layman. But to do the, in order for somebody, or in order for a demonstration or protest against somebody who is not giving a get, not giving a Jewish divorce, could, does that have to be mandated by Bezin? Can just people do it because they know somebody is withholding giving a get? I think that's part of the question. It, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Part of the question is a valid question, and uh, definitely it should be mandated by a Bezin. But we, here, the, here the question is: after the fact, if it just happened without a Bezin mandating it. Is it, is it going to is it going to uh, no, uh, disqualify to get after the fact? Um, and the answer is perhaps. But again, who should who should be bringing it to the public forum? Respons responsible responsible not uh, not uh, disgruntled layman individuals. In other words, so how do you determine that a get is not valid? What are some of the criteria? And how often does it happen that a get that's given is determined not to be valid? Okay, so I'll answer or respond to the second part. I have no way of knowing how often it happens. Hopefully it doesn't happen too often. Uh, what are the criteria? Again, a, a, a demonstration or public shaming should not disqualify the get. But as we know that uh, demonstration is not like it, 40, 50 years ago, demonstration was uh, uh, 10, 10 people walking around in, in a circle with, uh, with, with holding, holding signs, uh, Joe Schmo, give a get. That's not what happens today in a, in a demonstration. It can get very volatile and very valid. So if it crosses the line of being real uh, threat of violence against the husband, then it might, the, the, get, the, the get would may well be in, uh, invalid. And in such a case, definitely responsible or abundant who know how to who are qualified to to rule to rule on these things, they should uh, speak out about it. Who are the responsible bottom that are able to and are qualified to rule in such a situation? Usually, usually these things go to the Gedolei Harabon and Gedolei Hador. Okay, so in other words, you would have to go to, so we'll go to the good, they would go to the gedolim, and I was, I'm just trying to understand clearly so what the process would be that's that should be the process yes they should uh, or uh, or as rabbi khan said uh, uh, because of the fact that everybody everybody knows everybody here in america so people might want to not want to get involved so there's, 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 an, there's an idea to go to territory so where they do have qualified uh, rebellion and uh, and we, we like to assume that they're not in, that they're not involved in a day-to-day basis of what's going on in america so they should go to those rebellion Chaim, did that answer your question? All right, thank you for your phone call. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so Chaim, quick, you have a 30 second rejoinder or another question because we're going to move on. I couldn't hear I couldn't hear the word the rabbi was saying. Honestly, the internet is bad, but uh, if there's no competent basin, if the basin system's corrupt, then we just have, as a public, should probably have to notify people if getting our problematic and not kosher, no? Rabbi again, who, again, who is we? The people, I guess. The pe yeah, we the people. You know, my experience has been that we the people doesn't exist. We the people is translated into in, in the gematria to people who have, who have an agenda to push. So no, I don't think people have an agenda to push should be the ones should be should be bringing it to the forefront. Let me ask you. Okay, thank you for your question. Um, but shouldn't there a list be published? And you said Gadol. Now there was, you know, there, there's. It's an amorphous answer because we need to pinpoint. Shouldn't there be a list of saying, here's a qual group of 10, 20, 30 qualified rabbinim. If you have a problem or you have a question dealing with, with the get, maybe it's not valid, maybe it's forced, maybe these are the people you should consult in America, the people you go to Israel. Shouldn't there be some better resources for people to deal with it? Because when you say go to the Gedolim, you know, that's, that's, very, that's not as specific as it could be. Okay, so, the, so again, the answer is uh, uh, people know how to find the gedolim. Okay, without make, without making a uh, without making a list, it's like the famous story of the Russian Feinstein. They asked they asked the New York Times, "How did you become the place to fly Israel?" One guy came and liked the answer. He told his friend, and he and friend came, and I had two guys like the answer, and so on and so forth. Um, again, I'm not. <laughs> 
I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get on get, get, get on that on public radio and start giving names of everybody who yes or no because even if I just say who yes, we call a lot of touch my hand, we can call it touch my lot. I'm not going in that direction. But definitely there are there are competent rebuttal here in America and also in our city for all. You can forgive me. I, humbly, I, I ask this, but if we said here's ten, and when we're not saying the other people not qualified, but here are the ten biggest names. It may help people because obviously if we're getting questions on the air and people and I've gotten questions off the air and people are, are grappling with this. So it means that the system is not working fully where there should be a better way of educating the public as well as the yeah, robotic. Yeah. I hear what you're saying, but I would prefer not to start naming names. Perhaps Rebecca Khan will be less discriminating. Rebecca, uh, I, are you ready to name names? <laughs> nah, I, think, I think I understand. I understand where Rebecca Gertner is coming from. Of mentioning names and not mentioning names, and you probably the radio is not the most appropriate place. But I, I hear the question, the person who's asking the question, I hear his question, what to do when there's a question about a get. You know, whenever I have a question about a get, and there are many questions that come up, I, I go to Eretz Yisrael to a few daily paiskim, you know, and Rabbi Gertner knows who they are, and then then you go, they, they're found. If someone needs to find them, they're found, you know, and then then you have to, be, yeah, you you talk to them, you 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 go over the sugi with them, you go over the complications with them. Now, what are some of the challenges that you have in giving a get? Uh, obviously, you have money issues, you have your mental issues, you have societal issues, uh, children, all, there are kinds of, all kinds of pressure. What do you find to be the most common reason why people are coming to you for a get? I would, I would say, say all of the above. All of the above, okay. <laughs> No, but I'm, I'm just saying because there are lots of different issues that people have today. And what are some of the challenges in dealing with that? The embed some of it can get contentious. So maybe from your experiences in the bezel, you can share with us without naming names some interesting stories that might be beneficial to people that are listening to us. Um, I think I think you should pass this question on to Rikana. I'm more in the uh, even though titularly I'm that big team, but I actually more deal with the appeals. So I deal with less, with less, less of the uh, the colorful stories. So you kind of deal more you deal with the appeals. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. So I'll tell you like this: any any I don't believe uh, uh, this is my personal opinion. I don't believe nowadays in 2023 we're in that we should be having DNA tires on Gitten. I, I, we could talk about this for hours. Dine terrorist means that one side comes and one side wants to give or not give a get, and one side wants to receive or not receive a get. The Besant system is not equipped to deal with it because generally we're dealing with high, highly dysfunctional cases. We're dealing with tremendous amounts of mental illness. And no matter what the Pesach Besant is going to give, it's never going to get through the blockage of the person's brain of what he wants to do or what she wants to do. And there's a question of how do you talk to the person's heart and how do you speak to the person nicely and how do you get through the person? Yes, of course, if it comes to the entire, the Gabar tells us in Sanhedrin, you have to pass it, no matter how much it hurts, no matter how much people are going to scream at you, no matter how much people are going to threaten you and make your life miserable, you know, you're going to have to do what, what the proper sock is. And trust me, the, let, let's let's talk right now specifically about men who don't want to give gitin. The men who don't want to give gitin, no matter what you pass in, they're still not going to want to give gitin, and then they're going to turn violent, and then they're going to turn angry, and I, I've dealt with those men, and I get constant emails, and, you know, the Dayanam who work under me, you know, they, they get threats very, very, very often when they pass in on a get case, and it's very, very difficult. But then you also have people who, you know, they're coming with a rightful taino that, you know, it's not the right time to give a get right now. They still want to settle certain things before they give a get. And the Bezin has to figure out how to deal with those appropriately and not and not and not expedite a get when it shouldn't be expedited. When there's a room for stolen bias, not to expedite it and to work with stolen bias properly, because if it gets given earlier than it's supposed to be given, you know, that could be a really, really, really big problem. But I apologize, well, Mr. Brenner. I'm getting uh, it's it's getting really, really late now. I didn't know we were gonna go on for so long. Um, I'm gonna let Robert Gertner continue. Um, I, I have to I have to move on. I have a morning still to get to. But no, thank no, you so much for having me on the show. You no, know, thank you for, for joining us. Uh, just if people want more information about your organization, about the Bezin, if you want to give out that information, uh, you can do so. It's, it's, uh, the, the main email address is admin at hadin.org. The Bezin functions, generally the Bezin tries to settle the cases. We work very closely with a mediation company called Concord Mediation. We try to settle the cases through there. If people need shalom bias or, or mental health issues, we have a company called Derek Shalom that we sent to that I founded and is a regular mental health clinic that has an Article 31 that works with Medicaid and Medicare and different government fundings. 
Um, the Besden is is what I use, what I what I think is as a, as the last stop, as when we can't figure out anything else. You know, that's where the Besden comes into place. But the Besden is not supposed to be used as often as people want it to be used. The Besden is supposed to be the last stop. People are supposed to try to mediate and settle their cases and work with Shalom and because then they were all children of the Rebbeinu Shleilam. Anyway, thank you, Rabbi Avi Kahan, for joining us and a continuous success. We look forward to having you back. I know it's a big, big issue. So, uh, okay, thank, thank you so much for having me, and you're in good hands with Rabbi Gardner. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Let me turn to Rabbi Gardner before we break. Uh, yeah. Here, here's the question that I have for you for Rabbi Gardner. Now, I know certain I know. they did them, certain bezins, when people go in front of them, they park the divorce to get in the bezin and they wait until I think the judicial system where they take care of those things is civil divorce. And once a civil divorce is done, they will release the get. So the get shouldn't be part of the civil divorce proceeding. I'd like to get your perspective about that procedure that some best, some Bhatti Dinam uh, do. Um, listen, really one thing has nothing to do with the other, but, uh, but uh, if that's what the parties agree to do with, so then there's no reason why not to do it. Um, but the reason being is some people use the get as a weapon in civil divorce. They won't, uh, they won't give a, a civil divorce or they want to extract certain concessions, whether it's money, whatever it is in the, in the proceedings. So this way they know the get shouldn't be the, the, the shouldn't be withheld or shouldn't be used as a bargaining chip in the other person, whether it's custody of the children, whether it's financial consideration, that's the thought why it's parked in Besden, but it's not released until after the other well, proceedings. Well, well, having it parked in Besden doesn't really accomplish anything because until the get, the get is, is administered to the wife, she is not divorced and the husband can always pull back. Um, what I think you were probably referring to is, is that certain what they did him, they will say that uh, let's get the get out of the way. Let's let's let, 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 let's give the get, and then we'll deal with everything else. Right. Now that's what I'm referring to. Right. To give okay. the get, but the get is held by the bez, and it's not get. It's not released uh, to the. In the yeah, well, man. It doesn't really, yeah, it doesn't really mean anything. It's not released because the fact that the delay is the horse, and therefore the therefore the uh, the threat is is is, is, is gone. But the problem is that very often then. Uh, the, the you know the, you, have you have to look at look, look at the other, other side of the coin. coin. Very often uh, uh, the, the 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 woman will get to get, and uh, then uh, she got the lunch. You know, there's no agreement. Even if there is an agreement, uh, it's not being kept uh, about the kids and everything. And uh, that's no, why she doesn't have to get in her possession. Uh, it's held by the Besden, so therefore she doesn't have the physical guy. I'm trying to remember the. The she, doesn't need the physical, she doesn't need the physical good. Hello, speaking, once the get has been given over to her, so then she's divorced. Uh, what they hold, what they will hold back is, let's say, the uh, the uh, the official uh, the official uh, document saying that she's divorced. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of people are not going to be you know, that's not going to be a uh, a drawback by them. It's, 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 it's a problem. problem. It's definitely a problem. And uh, what, 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 what really should be done is, is, is that is to, to, to allay, allay the fears of the husband is that you, 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 you and this is what we do in the Vajra Dinu Hara, is that we, we fashion the arbitration agreement in such a way that, uh, that uh, if, 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 the, if the parties uh, don't keep to the separation, to the, to, to the divorce agreement, or they don't, or they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't uh, they don't follow it through, so then it will be enforced in one court. We're speaking with Rabbi Tzvi Gartner. He is the um, he's the head of the Bezin of the Van Hadin Vahara. He's Correct, also the yes. author of the Sefer Kafia Beget. He's the publisher of a periodical called Sefer Tavunos. Uh, he's in Israel. He's also involved in the appeal process uh, from the Bate Din and from the Bezin here. And mm -hmm. we're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner. America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. Now we're back. Our final search, Rabbi Tzvi Gertner. We're looking at the challenges of Jewish divorce, getting a get. Get an email question from a listener, Rabbi Gertner, regarding, can you explain the process of Heter Meir Rabbanim, where you get different rabbis in different continents that will give a get in the case where uh, it's impossible to get a regular one? Uh, okay. 
Hetem Rabbanim is, uh, is, 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 is speaking in the case of a, of a, a woman who was refusing to accept a get, unrightly re re refused to accept a get, or she's incapable of receiving a get, she's insane or whatever. Um, so then, uh, so according, to, according to the Torah law, there's no problem. The husband is allowed to have more than one wife. But uh, about over a thousand years ago, or Ben Gershom, one of the last of the Belonim, he felt it would be necessary to equalize the, the rights of the, men, the woman to the men. And therefore, he said that you cannot divorce a wife against her will. And also, you cannot uh, have a second wife, unless it's, a, it's, a, it's an extreme situation, in which case you will be allowed, you would have to get the permission from 100 Rabbanim. And it was meant to be a Rabbanim. In those days, it was difficult to get 100 Rabbanim. Didn't they have to also be in different countries, if I remember correctly? Three, three Medinas, the question is what's considered Medinas. Uh, Rav Hankin is quoted as saying that uh, three that, uh, that in the uh, United States of America is 50 Medina, so joining the three states. Uh, definitely the idea was to make it very difficult, but okay, you know, uh, it's easier today, but still. Uh, but it, it's, it's a lot easier today because even if it's, uh, even if it wasn't just the United States, if it was three countries, it's right. easier to accomplish that today. So in a okay. sense, your stories of a Heter Mayor Rabbanam, the permission of 100 rabbis to, to grant the divorce, um, it's much easier. So does that change the picture that it's much easier to get it done uh, today? Because you can sure. find 100 it, rabbis in different continents. It doesn't, it doesn't, well, well, it doesn't really change it. it. It doesn't really change it because the fact is that uh, that, that, that was the law that was the law. But um, what, what, what you're talking about, talking about is, is, is that unscrupulous people abuse the system. And I'll explain in what sense. That one of the caveats of Hetemir Rabbanim is that in a case, let's say, where the wife is refusing to accept a get, or she's, not, she's incapable of accepting a get because she's uh, mentally ill, right? But the caveat is, is, that, is that, the, that in order for the um, Hetemir Rabbanim to, to, be in, to be in effect, the husband has to deposit a, a kosher get in the hands of the basin that is administering the Hetemir Rabbanim. And then the wife can pick it up whenever she wants, in the case of a mentally ill woman, whenever she's, uh, she, 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 if and when, better the she, she becomes well again, so then uh, she can get, get whatever she wants. Um, now, there are unscrupulous, but they didn't, and again, I'm not going to name names, that what they do is that they say, yeah, the get is by us, but uh, we're not going to release the get until the wife gives certain concessions, this and that. That's, that's a definite no-no. Uh, Ramesha Feinstein was very, was, very, was very clear about that. There's no such thing. A head to a bond can only work if the wife can pick up the get on demand. So, in other words, so that mean that you can't give a head to mayor or a bottom to a woman who's mentally ill? You could. You can't pick it up? No, no. Uh, no, no. You could give a head to mayor or a bottom, but there has to be a get. That when she will become well, then she'll be able to pick it up without any problem. Uh-huh. I see. Because even though the chance on some cases where the woman may never get well, it's possible. Okay, but then, as long as she's not well, she doesn't need to get. The main point is that when she needs to get, it should be available. Okay. But he said there are a lot of, again, we'll close with what we started out with, that But you're saying there has to be some Bezin reform where we have to have more competent but they did and more competent Jewish courts of law to deal more, with these top situations because exactly they, more more competent and more and more uh, and more honest absolutely so we applaud your efforts but i just hope there's a way and i i still don't know if there's a way we can make sure that the but they didn't know we have yet to be more compliant with halacha with jewish law and doing the right thing as opposed to being some of the problems that we discussed on this broadcast i can't i can't, I can't say that you're mistaken that you're misinformed <laughs> <laughs> a question, a question what can we do about it I'm, I'm not sure if there's anything more that we can do about it than we're currently doing I don't know because there's no okay. regulatory body for it that we're... Yeah. okay uh, I, I believe, believe that, that if, if the situation will become uh, sufficiently uh, worse uh, sufficiently compared up Clyde will get their act together and do something uh, if there would be agreement, something could, could, could be done. You could put, you could create, create a, uh, a, 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 a good, confident, but 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 they didn't, but they based it in Well, there is one. I think there are, what's very well respected is the one from the Rabbinical Council of America. The Besant of America is considered the, a very reliable Besant. Yes, I, I know the Rabbinical Council. I've, I've worked with them definitely. There, uh, <laughs> you caught me on that when I said I wasn't going to mention names, but okay, you got me. Since saying good night, okay. <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, Rabbi Shri Gartner, the of the head of the Bezin of the Vad Hadin Vahora, author yes. of the Sefer Kafia Baget, publisher of periodical Sefer Tavunos. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for sharing some insight. And hopefully we can alleviate the problem because too many people are getting divorced. There are all kinds of issues, as we heard during the broadcast, people uh, having different kinds of problems with the issuing of the Jewish divorce. And hopefully we're able to resolve it. And we just open up the dialogue to see what can be done, maybe shedding some light. We'll make some changes for the institutions. We thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you for having me, and uh, let me thank you on behalf of Kleiser for putting this, this and many other issues on into the public forum. No, thank you. It's very, very important. Maybe if enough people hear it and they say we can make some change, maybe we can, we can, we can do something. Well, well you, you have, have my number in case, in case the people start, uh, start breaking down your doors. <laughs> I think I'm getting calls of <laughs> angry people that they, they felt they've been uh shafted by, the system, shafted yeah. by the system so the, the, i'm getting those calls so yeah. uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you a little story and then we'll end up uh, a friend of mine was once attended a shear about 40 years ago from Robert barrel wine and at the end of the shear uh, he opened up the floor to questions and some some fellows there yeah, i got a question what's the question how can you say judaism says such and such if uh, if, if people don't do the exact opposite and Robert wine replied my dear, my dear young friend, never mistake Jews for Judaism. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, and hatzlach, and oh, man, you too. Lots of success in what you're doing. Oh, man. Oh, man. Thank you. Bye. Okay. We